water flows down. It may seem simple, but keep in mind that we are all in a watershed where water flows down and flows across the land or soaks in. Whether you are at the edge of a lake or the edge of a street, the edge of a creek or edge of your yard or parking lot, having native plants helps that water get clean and helps water soak in. Welcome. Connecting people, place with native plants is the goal of this video. My name is Heidi Ferris with Growing Green Hearts. I'm an environmental educator that works with schools and libraries, faith groups, cities, counties, and watershed districts to help bring together community health, clean water, clean air, people, place. Let's connect it all today. Water, land, air, living things, they're all connected. Here we are in the Rice Creek Watershed District, north of Minneapolis, north of St. Paul. A watershed district is the land area that water flows across and down. During our Meet the Plants video, yes, we'll talk about plants, but we're also going to connect plants to place. This is prairie. Prairie means a mixture of grasses and flowers with really deep roots. In Minnesota, there's less than 1% of native prairie left. But we know that prairie works to clean water, to filter and clean our air by sinking carbon. Prairie lands also create amazing habitat for butterflies, birds, and bees. Prairie land also helps us connect past to present, people to place. Here's an example of a large prairie. Native plants can also grow in shorelines, pocket prairies, or even just a few plants right where you live. Native plants are important in this watershed, but what does the word native really mean? Native plants, native land, native people. The word native simply means they were here first. Native prairie, well, there's less than 1% left in Minnesota. And we know that Minnesota is all about water as well. Minnesota in Dakota language means water that is clear. So let's all work together to use native prairie plants to help that water be even cleaner for the future. Here we are at a pocket prairie. Prairie can be big as in acres and acres, or it can be a little pocket. Here we are at a park where native prairie plants are habitat for pollinators. Water is being cleaned here. Air is being filtered as well. So native prairie plants grow in pocket prairies, native shorelines, and larger prairie areas. Well, this plant is lead plant. Lead plant has this purple spike and soft leaves. What you don't see is what's happening underground. Lead plant is such a hard worker. It has roots that go down 15 to 20 feet deep. This plant likes to grow where it's hot, sunny, dry, um, but it's also working to clean water, clean air, build soil. Meet purple coneflower. Purple coneflower, again, has very deep roots. Turf grass, which is used on lawns or soccer fields and things, has roots only this deep. But plants like this, native prairie plants, have roots that are sometimes three, five, ten feet deep. So purple coneflower has uh, this beautiful purple with orange center, but it's also doing a lot of work with its roots. Now when I purchase um, native plants, I make sure that they are not the cultivar version. Cultivars aren't as great for pollinators, but you, working with a native plant nursery uh, is recommended, and they often sell purple coneflower. This is a pocket prairie in the front yard within Rice Creek Watershed District where a mixture of grasses and flowers like these 
with their deep roots, are working to get water to soak into the ground. This is Black-Eyed Susan. You can see the brown center and yellow around the outside. It grows with many flowers on a single stem and loves to grow in a group. Those bright colors help wildlife, pollinators, birds, butterflies, you name it. Roots up to eight feet deep. This is blue stem grass, and this grass has been living in this spot for a few years now. You can notice the, the blue hue to the leaves, a little purple tinge on the stem. Blue stem grass is also known as turkey foot because when you turn the seed head upside down, looks like turkey foot. Native plants like these are going to go into this shoreline planting. For example, here's some blue stem. Big blue stem or tall blue stem grass may look small here, but over the next few years, its roots and leaves will grow to be six feet deep and six feet tall. So those deep roots of native plants, like the roots of big blue stem grass, are really amazing at cleaning, filtering water, well cleaning air, restoring habitat. Meet Blazing Star. This baby blazing star has root systems that are working hard. Once this plant is established, it will have roots up to 16 feet deep. There are many different kinds of blazing star that grow in Minnesota. You can have some where you live. Meet Monarda, also known as bee balm. This plant grows three to four feet tall. You can see the beautiful light purple petals. It's amazing food for pollinators as well as habitat throughout winter months. Meet common milkweed. Common milkweed is one of the many milkweeds in Minnesota that uh, also monarch butterflies depend on. Monarch butterflies will lay their eggs on the back of the leaves. So if you find common milkweed, take a peek and look for some of those butterfly eggs. The flower of common milkweed looks uh, like a purple, about the size of a baseball, and that flower eventually turns into pods like this with hundreds of seeds. Once the pod is brown and breaks open, the seeds are taken by the wind and spread. So, fun nature toy and supports butterflies. That's common milkweed. Meet swamp milkweed. Swamp milkweed is one of the many milkweeds in Minnesota, so it supports those monarch butterflies. And the pollinators love these big purple flowers. Swamp milkweed here is planted near the water's edge because swamp milkweed likes to get its feet wet. In other words, those deep roots, they like to uh, be in the moist soil and they also, those deep roots, help to hold the shoreline, helping keep our water clean. So, meet swamp milkweed. Prairie onion has a pink purple flower that looks like fireworks early spring when it blooms. But throughout the summer and fall, you can also use the leaves for chives. It's tasty. Roots of this plant grow five to six feet deep. It's Joe Pie weed. Joe Pie is one of my favorites because it likes to be near water just like I do. So this is a great one to put at the base of your rain garden or any shoreline restoration. Minnesota has a state bee, the rusty patched bumblebee, that loves native prairie plants like this one. This is anise hyssop. It makes a great tea. The leaves taste and smell like a sweet licorice. And as I look around me, pollinators are swarming to get a taste of that sweet from the flowers as well. Notice that I'm near the street. Not a shoreline, but that's okay because our streets carry water downhill. So having plants near your street, parking lot, rain garden, 
This is also a way to care for water. Here's a plant I'd like you to meet. It's called side oats grama grass. Grasses can be really tricky to identify and there are hundreds of prairie plants uh, that are grasses, but uh, I found it helpful to really look at how the seeds are growing. So if you can see here, the seeds grow off to the side, side oats grama. This is Lock Lake, where Rice Creek flows through before reaching the Mississippi River. And here at the shoreline are a lot of, well, red osier dogwood shrubs, but also blue flag iris. Blue flag iris are a shoreline or rain garden plant that work to crisscross with their roots and hold soil. Another neat thing about blue flag iris is, um, is how their seeds spread. So after having an amazingly vibrant purple flower, the seed pods form and eventually spread down the shoreline when they pop open in fall. Thank you for meeting the plants with me today. To learn more about native prairie plants, check out online Rice Creek Watershed District, Blue Thumb, and Growing Green Hearts. I'm Heidi Ferris. Until next time. <laughs>